Oh, now what? Okay. I don't know what that was. Hey, everybody. It's your boy, Search Dragon. Welcome back to another edition of the Heaven's Monsters Podcast. It's your boy, Chris Petrie. Andre Mitchell. And Mike Henry with me today. If you're ready for another episode of the Heaven's Monsters Podcast, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. I said, if you're ready for another episode of the Heaven's Monsters Podcast, give me a hell yeah. Hell yeah. Let's talk about the first SmackDown of October. Okay, so let me go ahead and switch that. Get that right here to the info. Okay, so we start off the night with the fact that Roman Reigns, with Paul Heyman by his side, comes to the arena issuing the fact that he's not happy with how Clash of Champions went. He retained his championship, but had his cousin Jimmy Uso come out and stop the match, and he got what he wanted. He got him to say that he's the chief. He's his chief. But he didn't get Jay to say it. He wanted Jay to say it. He calls out Jay. Jay comes out. And all Jay is looking at is the championship. And he says, you want another shot? I'll give you the shot. I'll give you a shot at Hell in a Cell. You want it? You got it. But there is going to be a stipulation where it is going to be the ultimate stipulation. Let me put y'all over here. So what is this ultimate stipulation? Is it a Hell in a Cell match? Or is it something... I'm thinking ultimate stipulation, great the greatest one we've ever seen in WWE history. All I could think is the worst thing you could do is... Because this is about tribal, the Samoans. Is he going to have... If Jimmy... I mean, no, not Jimmy. Jay doesn't beat him for the championship? Uni- Universal Championship? Is he going to have him kicked out of the tribe? Uh, I think if uh, I quit match in a hell in a cell. Yeah, that think, might be it. I don't know. Now that's two two stipulations, bro. Hell in a cell and I quit match. Has that been done before? No, I, don't, uh, I can't. I don't recall. I don't remember. Right. So after that, Jay is off trying to tell off his uh, cousin and champion, but not his chief. He doesn't recognize him. And your boy, Chris, your boy, AJ Styles comes out after a loss from Sami Zayn at Class of Champions. Due to and his, Jeff Hardy. And Jeff Hardy, yeah. Due to him using handcuffs. Mad genius or cheater? Either which way, it was legal. So he comes out saying that it's all about family. It's all fixed. It's all good. Boo-hoo. He plans on beating him up and putting himself in the potential title picture. So this was interesting to see AJ Styles fights Jey Uso, and Jey Uso gets the win. How do you feel about that, Chris? Uh, uh, I was, 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 So AJ Styles is put in the back right now of all titles. I don't know where he's going to go. Due to the draft, he might even go to Raw. I think I saw a spoiler on that on TikTok. So I'll look forward to that while watching SmackDown. Excuse me. Just had soup. All right. Andre, how do you feel knowing that AJ Styles lost to Jey Uso? Oh, I feel all right so far. I mean, I don't know. It was kind of interesting to see, though. You know. 
And you, Mikey? First off, who the hell asked AJ Styles to come out and interrupt Jay, U- Jay Uso when Jay Uso came this close of winning the championship against Roman Reigns? But now look what happened. Jay Uso makes AJ Styles pay for interrupting, and AJ Styles had to pay the price so Jay Uso can concentrate on his cousin, the tribal chief, Roman Reigns. Next thing to mention is Otis versus John Morrison. Due to the oh, contract, yeah, due to the contract of no laying hands on Miz until this co- court meeting, in which Otis is not going to give the money in the bank, he's going to sell it in court. But John Morrison, on the other hand, as already explained by Tucker, his name is not on the cannot lay hands on. So we have a match. Between those two and Otis, of course, beats John Morrison. Hallelujah. Anything to add on that, Mikey? Well, like I said, I hope the Miss is watching because Otis opened up a can of whoop ass on John Morrison because Otis still wants revenge on the Miss for sending Mandy Rose to Monday Night Raw. And I know that's got to hurt Otis, but. Trust me, Otis definitely wants to get his hands on that dirty bastard, the Miz, portraying his speech to Monday Night Raw. <laughs> I hope the Miz is watching. In which case, uh, what do you think, Andre, of Otis beating John Morrison? I'm glad he beat up. He beat Morrison. That's a good thing. You, Chris? Otis. Got the victory, and John Morrison is back on a losing streak. Oh, yeah. Next thing I want to mention is the fact that I scrolled down to the bottom of the page of the YouTube page. Let's mention some stuff we got here. One thing for certain, we have Carmella. Finally, I knew it had to be her. This mystery woman was revealed to be Carmella, and she has turned full on heel. Blaming the audience, blaming the people for liking how she was dancing and prancing. No more of that. We're going to have a Carmella that is all about her and untouchable is the theme. Oh my God. Also mentioning the fact, also mentioning the fact that she said it herself. Thanks to the draft, she'll be either taken to kipped on SmackDown or taken to Raw. Wherever she goes, she's will be untouchable. Your thoughts, Chris? I heard you. Why Carmella blaming the people? It's nothing wrong with the old Carmella. We like the dancing and stuff like that. Why? Why is she blaming all the people? We liked it. Because the people gave her hype. That's why. She was uh, going based on what the people wanted. I can understand. Doesn't justify what uh, say, uh saying such cruel things though, but that's her thoughts. That's the way she's going. You, Andre, how do you feel about Carmela turning her back on the fans and just making it about her? Andre, he's MIA. Okay, Mikey, what's your thoughts? My goodness, I mean, she began as the the princess of Staten Island. She, she started as, my name is Carmel, I'm the princess of Staten Island. Then she became the moonwalking, trash-talking chick, trash-talking chick, and now what? Now she was called self-untouchable? Yeah, buddy. What? Oh, come on. I mean, last time she turned heel, she attacked one half of the Hall of Famer, the Bella twin, Nikki Bella, when Nikki came back from a, a serious neck injury. Let's not forget that. Oh, yeah. And let's not forget that she became the two-time, two-time Miss Money. Thanks to her old pal, James Ellsworth. Let's not forget that. Yep. Okay. Andre, you back? But now, but now, but now. Uh-huh. Oh, my goodness. Go, Go ahead, Andre. Mikey. Go on. Get your two cents. How do you feel that Carmella is back 
as untouchable, but Turner backs on the fans, Andre. Oh, that's messed up. But I'm glad she's all right. I'm glad she's back. But yeah, she don't get what's coming to her. Continue on, Mikey. What, what you were saying? As I was saying, I just couldn't believe that Carmel would go on for being the princess of Sat on to a moonwalking, trash talking chick, and now untouchable. Mm-mm-mm. Next thing we're going to mention is this. Oh my goodness. Due to the once every season, we have Kevin Owens coming on to SmackDown for the Kevin Owens show and his guest. Alexa Bliss. During this uh, uh, conversation, Alexa Bliss is questioned by Kevin Owens saying, I think he brainwashed you. And yes, she admitted that her, her brain's been washed and cleansed. She now sees what the, tr uh, the fiend has provided for her. And that... She calls him, says, let him in. And The Fiend is on the oh Kevin Owens God. show, and he has him in the uh, mandible, mandible claw. claw. <laughs> yep. And he lays him out. And we have Alexa Bliss and The Fiend locking eyes. Hey. How you feel about that, Andre? Knowing that uh, the fiend crashed the show of Kevin Owens, and Alexa Bliss is working for him. I don't really like Bliss working for him. I like seeing her with Nia Jax. Uh, it was all right so far, I guess. You, Chris? Uh, I think I fiend and Alexa Bliss two evils. But Kevin Owens, I'm not going to let this lie down. He might get revenge on the fiend. Oh, yeah. You, Mikey? Like him or hate him, I have to agree with Kevin Owens. I believe that I believe that the fiend is brainwashing Alexis just to get what he wants. And I'm going to say this off the record. Right. The fiend does not want the goddess. The last thing you don't want is Alessa join force with some evil monster like The Fiend. If anyone wants to go after The Fiend, it's either Kevin Owens or the monster mob man, his former wife, family counterpart, the black sheep himself, Braun Strowman. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, Alessa's best friend, Nick Cross. Mm. So, next thing we have is Seamus making quick work of Shorty G Someone he's already fought several times in the past. And like I said, make quick work. Anything else happen after that? Nope. Damn, that which was quick. One the, you mean, which, which one? The Biggie versus Sheamus? Baby. What, 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 you mean Biggie so, versus, excuse me, Shoy G versus Sheamus. Sorry, I got my name. Yeah, that was quick match. <laughs> Yeah, he turned the tables quick. Yeah, says it was a short and sweet for the Celtic in this win. Yeah, I guess we could skip that one since it was so short. There was no controversy or nothing. Did Big E even show up to uh, pick a fight with Sheamus in that match? Or after Sheamus? No, it says after he... It says after regrouping the Tower Suit, so I landed two huge broke kids to put an end to the class, but I don't... No, I don't think so. Yeah, I'm we not could, quite sure. Yeah, we can skip that one then. There's nothing much going on. All right, next we got one that's really going on, and that's a six-man tag between Matt Riddle, Lindsay Dorado, Grand Metalik versus King Corbin, Shinsuke Nakamura, and Cesaro. So they're going out, the baby faces going out without uh, Kalisto. Kalisto, for some reason, was not there and on time. So they go out for the match, and then Kalisto comes out saying, Why'd you leave me behind? I thought we were coming out together. The like, dysfunction in the junction, people. Oy. So altogether, these guys would definitely put one hell of a show. 
But damn. It would be led for destruction on the fact that uh, hold up. I'm trying to see who pin? Who? It was it, it, that little pin, uh, Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro for the three count. And then after that, the win could be as Lance Serrano, Cabron Caliso after the match, while Tess continued to boil within the team. Yep. So, sa- uh, oh yeah, Matt Riddle did win. Okay. I was thinking uh, the baby face is lost. I don't know why. I'm thinking they lost. So the baby faces won? Yep. Oh, that's right. Kalisto then came in and raised the arm of Matt Riddle like he did something. He didn't do nothing. Listen, there's, you know there's drama between the Lucha House Bar because they've been teasing there's going to be a potential breakup. So I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe due to the draft. Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to comment on that, Mikey, since you said that? What? Well, like I said, it was a huge win for Matt Riddle's team. He got the job done over the heels. Yeah. How do you feel about that match, Andre? It was all right so far. You, Chris? Uh, it was a great match, but I saw the Kalisto kick the raw man. Uh... Let's say Toronto. He kicked Let's say Toronto by mistake. And oh, that's what I got. Picked up the weird victory. And the Lucha House Party. And then the uh, problem started. Let's say Toronto pushed Kalisto for Nelly him by mistake. Yeah. So next is. I think the main event. Yeah. Uh, before we get to that, before we get to that, there's one thing that popped. There's one thing that they didn't show us, and that is Sasha Banks addressing to Bailey. Yeah, that did happen, and she revealed yeah, that that next. Because I, ne- I, cause I, cause I, I scrolled it down. I'm like, where's the one that Sasha Banks addressed to Bailey? And I'm like, they haven't sh- I see. I did watch it, but they didn't put it up on WWE. I'm like, where is it? Mm. So basically, what he's mentioning is the fact that Sasha Banks said that she is going to tr- take that championship from Bailey, and that she didn't reveal that the neck brace she was wearing was not necessary. What happened after that, Chris? Do you remember? Uh, yes, uh, there's some words spoken about uh, Bailey, the world model, the coward. For one, everything from herself. You have anything to add on to that, Mikey? Oh, yeah. Sasha Banks telling Bailey, you don't stand a chance, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I really hope Bailey is one. <laughs> Bailey's longest reigning SmackDown Women's title reign is to an end. Trust me. It's time to have someone to take the title off of Bailey's waist. How do you feel about that, Andre, knowing that Sasha Banks claims that she's going to take the championship from Bailey? Uh, I hope she does take it from Bailey, even though Bailey's my favorite wrestler, but I was, I'm hoping uh, Bailey uh, lose that title to Sasha. Okay, first thing we got to mention before talking about the main event, and that's the fact that Sami Zayn in the back would actually go and say that the championship that was newly made during the fact that he was quarantined, the, that Jeff Hardy had previously, he had thrown away in an aluminum trash can symbolizing its end and the bringing back of his championship that he had during his reign. So this it would be a title match rematch one on one without AJ Styles. I mind you, I know Chris is upset about that. Am I right, Chris? 
<laughs> so in this match, there was one variability. It was a regular match, but before the match started, while Jeff Hardy's entrance was going around and coming to the ring, and the referee wasn't looking, he had removed the turnbuckle safety padding from the top turnbuckle. During that match, that was a major factor, and he tried to have Jeff Hardy constantly hit it. Until finally, during some issues going around on the top of the turnbuckle, he finally got it while Jeff Hardy landed face first into the turnbuckle, knocking him out and pinning him right there and then, retaining his championship as the IC champion, the Intercontinental Champion. So now both AJ Styles as well as Jeff Hardy are now put in the back. Now we ask ourselves, where does this go during the draft this week on SmackDown? I'm going to watch that and find out. Mikey, what do you guys say? Leaving Jeff Hardy unconscious. And now, now Jeff Hardy has to get the back of the line. Who's next in line for Sami Zayn's Aaron Connell title? We'll have to wait and see. You, Chris? I hope someone take that Intercontinental title from here, from him, that he don't deserve to hold that title. Despite taking his balls and went home during that damn pandemic. Uh-huh. How do you feel about the, uh, Sami Zayn cheating to get the retain his championship, Andre? All right, so far. Okay, I'm switching to two hundred five live. I'm trying to get it. Was there an episode of two hundred five live? Um, let me let me let me let me look it up. Let me look it up. I'm looking it up too. Recap. Oh, that's why there wasn't because it was just a recap of Swerve and Santos Escobar going in for NXT that Sunday. Okay, so we can skip that. Okay, and what about talking smack? Let me look that up. Me too. I'm looking it up. Because because this song is my has Sasha Banks. That's one. Who else? Oh, oh, oh today's guest was Caleb Branson and John Morrison. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Yeah, Sasha Banks would be the one to lead in. And she said her piece like she said in the middle of the ring. And that she was going to get her. She's going to smack that bitch. Any thoughts on that, uh, Chris? Uh, I would only say that the love for Sasha, Sasha Bell, being uh, Bailey and take, take the title from her because Bailey will hold that championship too long. And you, Mikey? I don't blame Sasha Banks for sending Bailey a mess, but like I said, I really hope Bailey is watching. I really hope Bailey is watching because her days at SmackDown Women's House are going to come to an end. Here we go. I got it. I finally found it. That got it. Took a while. I think I did. Or is it just a video clip? Is that it? No. I remember it was supposed to be John Morrison, like you said. John Morrison's a special guest. And he, after Sasha Banks, it would be Jay Uso. Jay Uso. Oh, hold up. That's who the other person was. It was Sami Zayn. Jay Uso and Sasha Banks. 
That's like that's my thought. That's why I try to remember who was it. It, it was Sasha Banks one, but who were the other two? It was James and Sami Zayn. That's why they joined Kayla and John. Mm -hmm. See, it took us a while to. F I'm trying to remember who it was, and I've remembered. So with John Morrison. Uh, he was siding with Sami Zayn, talking about this and that, and he, uh, Sami Zayn, is happy, happy to hear Kylie actually say that he is the undisputed Intercontinental Champion. And like, oh, finally, please. finally, you say it. He's right there. He has a championship. Oh, mentioned. He also mentioned. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. So, with that said, it was just Sami Zayn gloating this whole time, and that's far as that. And just, uh, 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 yeah, uh, uh, let's skip that. Big, 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 uh, with Sami can't stop bitching after bitching after. Get the bleep out of here, Sami Zayn. What about you, Andre? How do you feel about Sami Zayn just gloating? Oh, forget Sami Zayn. He sucked, man. I'm tired of him. Not to mention that, like I said, he took his you-know-what during that damn pandemic. Mm-hmm. Five months. Five months he was gone. <laughs> and, and, never, and never lost. Never lost. Never showed up at work. With that said, we go to Jay Uso, and Jay is Jay's focus on his cousin Rus. Uh, yeah, Roman Reigns. Well, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened to him. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like, I'm like, why is he looking like that? I mean, is he lost? Is he confused? Like, no, he focused. That's a he focused on the one calling himself the chief. <laughs> I, I was like, what? I don't know why he's got that. Look on his face. Not to mention, we hear from Kylie whoops, that the match hey. is official. At Hell in a Cell, it'll be family versus family once again. But they didn't say it would be in a Hell in a Cell match. Did they? I don't think so. The stipulation that Roman Reigns was talking about has not been issued. I still think it's going to be uh, kicked out of family. As a stipulation. That's going to suck. And we also got to mention the fact that John Morrison made a joke uh, saying that have you ever seen your cousin Roman Reigns with dry hair? He, he always sees it wet. He always sees it wet. Is that a superpower or something? He's, he's always moist in his hair. <laughs> he got him laughing. What the bleep? Thank you, John Morrison. What the bleep? Thank you, John Morrison, what the for bleep? putting a smile, cracking a smile on Jay Uso. He needed that. <laughs> what the, what the bleep? <laughs> Have you ever seen it with dry hair? I haven't. I always see it wet. How does he keep it wet? <laughs> Yeah. Right get the bleep out of here. <laughs> After that, like I said, with Sasha Banks being the last guest, she actually issued more and more and more talk about her and Bailey and how she's going to be the one to take her out. Mikey just left. Oh. So how do you feel, Andre, about Jay Uso focusing on Roman Reigns? Uh, that was good, man. I want, I'll see it again. <laughs> like I was saying. And how do you feel, Andre, about Sasha Banks uh, definitely chewing out Bailey more and saying that she's coming after her? I hope to see Sasha Banks get a revenge on uh, Bailey because Bailey really needs to get a butt whooping from uh, Sasha. You, Mikey? Oh, trust me. Bailey's going to tap out the soccer face thing. You, Chris? Uh, I hope, uh, uh, well, 
I hold Bailey go play one thing with her, and that is that skill chair. Yeah, the buddy. One, the one that, the one that almost ended Sasha's career. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, boys? No, I think that should be it. Uh, Are you currently sharing your time? Next Friday, we're going to be a uh, fourth count anywhere. Uh, Sheamus versus Big E. Yeah. I watched that already. Oh, I actually haven't even finished watching it, so I'll, I'll get back to that. So with that said, a shout-out to our fellow brethren of the Heaven's Monsters podcast. A shout-out to Xavier, Mikey, Andre, a link to their YouTube channels will be in the descriptions down below, as always. And a remaining shout-out to Chris Petrie, T-Money, as well as Renee, Farrell, and Delvin. You ready to end this, boys? Let's do it. Whee! Here we go. You like this video? Give it a thumbs up. You didn't give it a thumbs down. Hit the subscribe button, like the content, hit that notification bell for the next Heaven's Monsters podcast. Uh, next video, I'm going to start that off with, uh, I'm going to try and change that up. Try and say like and subscribe at the beginning of the video next time. So once I upload this video, we'll work on NXT TakeOver 31 in just a bit. So with that said, I'm Serge. This is Andre. This is Chris. And this is Mikey. Tell him what's up, Mikey. And that's the bottom line, because it has a bunch of podcasts from Sesco, and we'll see you just a little bit for Take Over 31. Bye, everybody.